All right, it's Friday. We're following the jobs numbers with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Jim, what did you think? Well, you know, we interviewed Gary Cohn, and it's very interesting because the bonds are signaling that there's going to be a slowdown in employment. Uh, the employment numbers were weaker, so the bond market got that right. Uh, the earnings are saying the opposite. The earnings say the companies are saying, you know, doing very well. We have a big decoupling going on. Um, but it is very clear that the economy is not producing the jobs that we thought they were. Uh, and it's also losing jobs in retail at a pretty accelerated rate. So overall, it was a number that showed me that uh, the reason why we don't have big GDP growth is we don't have uh, an acceleration in hiring but that it is decoupling from the companies who are still reporting great earnings. Okay, let's talk about earnings and retail earnings, Lululemon. Yeah, Lulu, I did a piece for Real Money just saying, listen, I wavered, I wavered because sometimes stocks are too volatile versus the truth. Uh, uh, Lauren Pontevant, he did a great number. Uh, it was a great number because uh, what happened is is that they weren't nearly as challenged as people thought com com competitive. Uh, E-commerce was good. Uh, Shanghai store, incredible numbers. Uh, right fashion, he did say the problem was fashion and he got fashion right. Supply chain issues, they solved those issues. Once they solved them, then the stock is back to having its, the company's back to having its luster. What I've concluded is that the stock is very hard. I mean, you really got to be a risk taker to take the stock because even though I think the company is, is, is fabulous and they have a great ethos, I know that people can get hurt in the stock. They can make a huge amount of money and they can get hurt. And it's your call if you want to roll the dice. But it, you should roll the dice positively, but understand that if they miss, you saw what can happen. Mm. All right, speaking of fashion, what did you think of the now public Canada Goose earnings? Yeah, Canada Goose is something that we have just been pushing endlessly, saying that, look, it's much better than people realize. I took a lot of heat for it, both from environmentalists, because they do have fur that, uh, although you, they can explain it very well on the website, I urge people to go to the website. But I, people also thought it was just seasonal and therefore the season was over. They committed to a very big growth rate, which is what we said they would. Uh, there's not that many shorts in the name, but people were, I think, were quite surprised how good the business is. Uh, I continue to think that the brand is, is uh, going to be an international brand and is spreading and they, have, uh, they can do additions. It does feel a little bit like Uggs coming out of the gate. Uh, Uggs were good for a very long time uh, before you had to get out of Decker's. You did such a great analysis on Mad Money right after the Canada Goose IPO. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we did a lot. And really I know we, we took a lot. Remember, we take heat. I know when we take heat after doing a lot of work, uh, you have to dig in your heels. Uh, we dug in our heels, Canada Goose, and I'm glad a lot of people bought it. Great stuff. All right, how about Restoration Hardware? Yeah, restoration Hardware, I, look, it, it shouldn't have been. It, the company didn't do anything that I think would have really been uh, that out of the ordinary. They did cut the forecast, but they cut the forecast because they got to move some uh, some inventory. Uh, this one is again like Lululemon. I mean, a move that could in many other stocks would be two or three points, 11, 12 points. Uh, so you're playing with fire with restoration hardware, hardware and Lulu, but some people are firefighters and some people wear asbestos suits. All right, moving on to technology, what did you make of Broadcom? Broadcom was extraordinary. Hawk Tan, I've never heard him that bullish. He's talking about a 40% increase in the uh, Apple Watch. I'm sorry, in the uh, Apple and the iPhone. Um, they are doing so much uh, fabulous about small miniaturization and also about Wi-Fi. Uh, and, and about the old Broadcom, which is about um, the kinds of things that you get for video. Uh, they're hitting on all cylinders. Uh, the read through there is that you still can stick with Skyworks, you can still stick with Corvo, uh, you can still stick with Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm's been up a lot. There was some re really good chart work that we did um, with Tim Collins, who's just amazing for real money. We have so many good stars. And I feel like that this was the quarter that you must go read because I've never heard him this bullish and I've been on every Hawk Tan conference call for ages. All right, let's talk about Actioners Plus holding Alphabet. Uh, Waymo may be developing self-driving trucks. Yeah, well, look, uh, self-driving trucks are the answer uh, because drivers have uh, the rules and restrictions on drivers are very tough now. It's something that unless the federal government rolls back, it's just a limited amount of time that they're allowed to drive and they have to keep logs. Uh, now, uh, Schneider, a very big trucking company, told me you should not expect an 18-wheeler to have no driver in it driving next to you. That's not going to happen. Uh, but there are lots of different kinds of delivery trucks, and there is a huge delivery uh, truck driver shortage. Mm. So this could be for that. 
Okay, another action alerts name, Western Digital, their CEO may be meeting with the CEO of Toshiba. Yeah, now on the conference call, Hock Tan uh, for uh, Broadcom, very specifically uh, said, listen, we're a connectivity company, and uh, the company that Western Digital wants to buy in Toshiba is not a connectivity company. So he really threw a lot of cold water on the idea that he was competing against Western Digital. So I believe now Western Digital, excellent article by Eric Johnson on the site, uh, I believe Western Digital is going to get Toshiba. I, I also think the stock shouldn't be down, but the market's a little rocky here. I would be a buyer. Now, if you're a trader, you want to be a buyer of Western Digital. We have position for action alerts. We're, we're up very big. But just be aware that that Broadcom story was shocking to a lot of people because Hawk Tan basically said twice, listen, we're a, a connectivity company, which to me said it's not going to be theirs. Maybe there's someone else who wants it besides Western Digital, but I think Western Digital is winning. And then on Stop Trading, on Squawk in the Street, you talked about Workday. Yeah, no, Workday had this fabulous quarter, and I, one of the things that bothers me a lot is that there's initial people who are short of stock, and they hit it down, and they created this uh, negative view on Workday. Now, Workday's going to be a battleground because it's up tremendously. But what you really, the real take about Workday was that the cash flow is good, the gross margins are getting bigger, they're going to have the $2 billion run rate, they're the second one after Salesforce to get to that level, and they did it very well, very big. They're taking share from SAP on the conference call. The bear, BTIG, that downgraded was saying, beware of Oracle. I know Am Neil Bush I had on their money list. I'm not that worried about Oracle. They took Amazon. They took uh, they took uh, Walmart, and they took Target in this quarter, which is rather amazing. Those are big retailers. Retailers very quickly adopting the cloud after being behind both uh, technology companies and Fin. And I think the most important thing is they had a 30. They were going in the mid 30s in growth. They went to the 40s. A remarkable acceleration of growth for Workday. You mentioned Walmart. Are you expecting anything from the shareholder meeting today? Uh, you know, look, I think Walmart is is doing many things right. And I talked to Doug McMillan's crew, and uh, they are doing things right. Well, Walmart News did tweet in my feed, listen, it's a voluntary program to take things to people's homes. Don't get too ahead of yourself. I did not. I was not getting it, but some, some people who follow me on Twitter were. And I come back and I say that you, I continue to want to own Walmart. Okay, and then we'll end as we always do with earnings to watch. We have another retail name, Asina Retail, on Monday. Yeah, you know, Asina pre-announced a bad number. It's now going to be below where I can talk about on Mad Money. I can talk about it here. Uh, uh, Mr. Jaffe, um, he may have bitten off more than he can chew. Okay, Jim Kramer, thank you so much as always. We appreciate it. And for more of the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.